Hello, welcome to Bedroom Builds at the From Python to Rust series, episode 9, Iterators. Continuing from the previous episode where we talked about hash maps. In the previous episode, and even in the ones before, we already used iterators to go over, for example, the characters within strings, or in hash maps, iterate over their keys, in the vectors, going over their elements. And, uh, well, we can also implement our own iterators, as we can in Python. In uh, Rust, this is done by implementing the iterator trait and uh, the iterator trait's uh, next method. Um, this uh, trait has associated types. You can think of them as a placeholder for all the other uh, methods that come with iterators, like, for example, map, skip, take, filter, sum, and whatever more. You can uh, check this out in the normal documentation of Rust. There's a boatload of them available, as you can see on the left, and all of them are nicely documented with examples. So it should be fairly easy for you to understand what's going on and use them in your own code. Let's hop over to my example code implementing iterators. We can see on the left again the Python code, on the right the Rust code. So the easiest to implement iterators are of course within a class in Python. We set up the class with their init and here we set the internal variable count to zero. You can actually also put this initializing of your counter within the iter magic function. So with the dunder iter, you create your iterator uh, instance. And then you have to implement the next magic method, which I've done here. This counter stops with values greater than five. And uh, the stop of the iteration is done by raising this stop iteration exception. How does this work in Rust? We can see on the right that we construct our struct called counter which has a private property called count. We use uh, unsigned integers for that. It's declared public because this is within a library, which you can see at the very bottom of uh, the screen. This is a lib and not a main file. <clears throat> and if you want to import this library and use the counter, you have to make it public. Now we've also implemented the constructor for this, and it sets the count to zero. And here we are implementing the iterator trait for the struct counter using the associated type, which uh, is in this case called item. And we implement the next method as required. This returns an option type of the type in this case of the associated type, so self meaning counters item, and this is actually a U32. We do the same thing, we only count up until five, and to stop the iteration, all we have to do is instead of returning a sum, we return a none, and then the iterator knows it has been stopped. Now Jumping a bit further down in the code, we are now back in further down in the code. On the left, I only implemented main, it's not really a test. On the right, however, it's a test module within the Rust code. And uh, what we are doing in the code is not producing any output, but we are writing assertions to check if uh, the code behaves as we expect it to. So in uh, Python notation, we are creating our counter instance. Then we call the next to get the next value from our iterator that we've defined up in our struct code. And we expect this to be one, two, three, four, five. And then it will stop iterating in Python, this raises an exception, so we have to catch this exception. So we increase, uh, no, we ask the iterator for the next value again. 
it will uh, raise the exception. And since we expected that, we actually assert that this is true and fine for us. And uh, below, we write the uh, code that creates those two iterators. Advance is one of them, and after this, does uh, some complicated nested math. And I've done the very same again a uh, second time. So the, here we would use the map reduce kind of style functional programming. And uh, here, this is the more Pythonic style, actually using generators and not iterators. And on the right, in Rust, the module test has to import the stuff that we've defined up there in the library. That's why we have this uh, use uh, super so that we can actually access our counter struct and its implementation. This test is calling the same thing as we do on the left side. We are doing lots of next calls. This time this is a method of our instance and not a global function like it is in Python. And uh, the last one we expect it to return none. And this is then also the indicator that our iterator is done returning items. And on the bottom we do the math. Here it's a bit easier to read. Um, what is happening is we sip. So that means we are joining two iterators. First one would be our counter starting uh, with uh, the one and uh, here we have the counter that skips the first value coming out of the iterator. Then we map those two. Here we have then A and B. So the f A would be the item coming out of the first iterator here on the left. And uh, then zipped, the second output would be B. This is the second iterator. And here we do our math, it's just a multiplication. Afterwards, we filter those values. So every value that comes out of um, this multiplication gets fed into here as an argument. We check if this is divisible by three. If it is, we uh, forward the value to the sum collector, and then we end up with the sum. And then this should be 18 because this will only yield the numbers uh, 6 and 12. On the left, you can see that one of the issues already is if you run the zip, you get the two values, but in a lambda function, in Python 3 at least, you cannot uh, deconstruct the tuple, so you have to access the tuple values like this. It makes it harder to read. Then you're actually, the start of this whole thing is in the middle, or at the end here, zip. Then you do the map, then you do the filter. This ends up in the sum. If you're used to reading this code, of course, that's not uh, too hard. And then uh, we do the assertion, this equals to 18. And uh, below, also not easy to read, but at least you get to deconstruct the tuple coming out of the zip. Would be using the generators, which you can see here. Um, Actually, this parenthesis goes for the first one. And uh, then also here we have another generator and then actually getting the x values that are filtered with this if here at the end. Yeah, let's simply run the code to see if it works. This means I click here, Rust run cargo test and the uh, cargo test tells us everything is fine. You can see up here that the first test called uh, calling next directly came out okay so every recitation worked out and uh, using other iterator trades methods as well. Let's hop over to Python. Here we can run uh, Python iterators. Since every station is fine, we don't get any exceptions raised and uh, we have no output. This means, yeah, 
it works fine as well. I hope this introduction into iterators helped you. And uh, read the documentation. There's lots of cool stuff you can do with all those combinators, iterators, filters. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Coming up in the next episode will be error handling.